something new. I think I'm pressing audio now. Okay, I think we are good to go, actually. Okay, yeah, one more second. I'm just trying to test some audio. If I do disconnect throughout, Scott, just give me a second, and I'll try and reconnect as fast as I can. <laughs> Again, yeah, this, is, this is... This uh, is live thing so i am having a lot of windows open yeah that's what takes time it's fun yeah <clears throat> okay. okay i think we are good to go all right um, so just another introduction. I know people might have been watching already, but uh, my name is Steven. I'm from Bluemon. Um, I'm here with Scott. He is a member of the community, but not only that, he is a personal trainer and, and, and he'll kind of talk more about his life, who he is, um, and he's probably even more than a personal trainer for all we know. And um, we'll kind of get into it. I think. Uh, We'll keep this pretty open and chill. I think Nana will also be joining us, but I wanted to kind of start the discussion. And and if she comes, that's great. If you have any comments, uh, if you're watching, uh, please uh, leave them in the chat. Uh, if you have any questions too for Scott, um, please leave them in the chat. And we'll do our best to read them. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. Um, Scott, do you want to do a little quick intro for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, obviously, yeah, first of all, thank you very much for the invite, and um, yeah, let me be in part of this, um, obviously, this podcast community sort of chat thing. Really, really pleased, and obviously, yeah, it's really, really nice to be welcomed in with the, uh, the Blue Man community. Um, yeah, in terms of who I am, um, yeah, as uh, Stephen said there, a personal trainer um, by trade. I do do online coaching and stuff, and I sort of help with like well-being and stuff, the mental side of things. Um, we'll dive a little bit more into that. At the moment, it is taking a bit more of a backseat. Uh, my primal focus at the moment is one-to-one -one personal training, but there's obviously plenty in the future still to go. So that's kind of where I'm at at this moment in time. Great. Thanks for that intro. Um, Nana's connecting now. So um, Nana is also part of the community. She is a admin moderator. She's been with the community since I can remember and she kind of helped founded it so we can talk more and she can kind of talk more about herself um, as we kind of go on but I wanted to kind of open up the discussion with I guess um, personal training um, oh hey Nana <laughs> hi I'm sorry hi. no it's all good technical issues yeah <laughs> I totally understand um, I'm just glad we're all yeah. we're all working here now yeah um, Great. So yeah, as I yeah, as I was saying, um, and feel free to chime in too, Nana. Um, as I was saying, um, with personal fitness, how did you, I guess, start with personal training? Um, is it something that you always knew you wanted to do, or was that something that kind of you that fell into your laps? Maybe you can talk a bit more about that. Yeah. So. Um interesting interesting start really uh it depends on obviously how far back we want to go with it um fitness has always been a passion of mine i guess even from a young age of playing sports um played a lot of sport as a, as a child and just growing up always had a bit of like involvement for me playing uh football in the uk we call it football for that reason in <laughs> america it's obviously soccer um but uh yeah no it was just it was just my choice of sport i was always active as a youngster um, and then as growing up, got more going towards the uh, fitness aspect and uh, predominantly towards the bodybuilding sort of area. 
So for me, I'm as a like as a person as well. I'm I've always been in the sense of like I've never been the sort of person to aspire in the sense of a typical Arnold Schwarzenegger or a Ronnie Coleman or some of those pro at Mr. Olympia sort of standards. Um, me, it's always been about just achieving the best of my physical, but my body is basically a, able to achieve. I was to say a really good physique. Um, I've always been a big fan of um, 100 meter sprinters. So if you're looking at their physiques, they are built fantastically well in terms of not only muscular, but for a performance level. And it's just something which I've always had um, some sort of aspiration for. But coming back off that question as well, like getting into it, to be honest, I've, I've done so many different, different sort of jobs in my life and I've worked in many different roles, doing lots and lots of different things. But fitness has always been um, an interest of mine and has always been something which has just always stuck and has always been part of my routine and brings me a lot of like uh, comfort and um, makes me feel good as a person. Obviously releases the dopamines and the um, endorphins in your body. Um, and I just remember I was training once. I've, like, I've, I've been training now for over, God knows, over a decade. So um, I just remember I was training one of my friends, to be fair, just doing it, doing it on the whim on the side. And he, he just turned around to me and said, you know, you're actually really good at this. Have you ever thought about turning it into a career? And it was genuinely one of those light bulb moments. You know, it was just like a, huh, ah, I guess I could. Maybe I could do that. And then uh, from there, just got into it really and uh, really took it further. Blinkers were on and got qualified. And um, the funny thing is I didn't actually start, I got my qualification, I didn't go straight into personal training. I was still doing my previous roles as like my other jobs, which is admin based. But it was only uh, thanks to COVID in some ways that really gave me the prompt to the backside ultimately to like say, you know what, do what I love, do find your passion, find what you really enjoy doing and getting into that. And uh, yeah, I took a role and took a took a bit of a plunge. Got into got a role in my um, the gym that I'm at, uh, currently at now, and uh, thriving pretty well. And love what I do. That's amazing. That's a great story, Scott. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I guess as a follow up question now, since you know most of us will be probably coming from like the Blue Mon community now, it's like how did you get yourselves yourself involved? I guess with Bloom on the community, you know, um, and yeah, maybe you can talk a bit about the discovery too, like how hair came into um, your life, or like styling and uh, or like hygiene and grooming and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so the funny thing is, in regards to that, is uh, like when I was a youngster, I've always had, um, I've always been like informed and stuff as a as a youngster that without trying to blow um, the smoke up my own backside again, is like, I was, I was told that like, I wasn't a bad looking guy, uh, even from a young age. And I didn't want to sound arrogant about it or sound um, stuck up. As I said, I was always trying to be appreciative and like um, supportive of the fact that like, if people say these things, they're very, that's very kind of them. That's obviously, obviously of their opinion. This is just me, who I am. Um, I often used to, would used to say to people, say, I'm, I'm pretty face, just don't speak to me because then you just find out that I'm just a bit of a joke behind. Um, but it's just it's just a bit of fun, really. And in terms of like hygiene and health and stuff, I've always I've always been interested because of what people have said about that. As well, I've always been like, well, consciously, if people are thinking that way, um, I should also try to like maintain that and don't mm. lose sight of it. Don't just waste or put your body to just put it through the ring and let it just go to the dogs. Ultimately, um, just looking after myself. And I've always had an interest. I don't. I, I couldn't even say when but i've always had an interest within hair and hairstyles and um just doing different things and being a bit like yeah trying things out and just being playful with regards to how my hair can grow and i it typically have definitely had the the sense of like wanting hair that i can't achieve so want to achieve curly hair not be able to not be able to get it or something or try and thicker te uh, textures but we're working with what i've got but with regards to like blue man and uh, the community, I feel like, well, I found, I just, I didn't know how I stumbled across Joe. I don't know if it was just a random YouTube poll or something that I was interested at the time. And I feel like it was back in the days when he was genuinely, because I think me and him are actually the same age. So it was back when he was, he was young and, uh, or figuring himself out and stuff. And he was doing, taking videos in his, in his bathroom. 
and it just caught my eye it caught my interest and we shared a common interest mm. and on the basis of that it just helped inspire me more to think well you know what if he's trying these things and he's doing all these sort of things i'm going to do take a little bit more care of, with it as well and in all honesty i can really say like it was it was an experience and i've never really looked back i've always it gave me a push towards hairstyling that I've never, that I always wanted, just never had the validation, I would say, mm -hmm. to um, do on my own. And even now, like, um, I'm still obviously very conscious of my hair. I still get compliments about my hair. Mm -hmm. um, people do ask, ask about how I maintain and stuff, but it's now to a state of like, this is, this is simply me because I've groomed, I've, I've, I've developed it over, again, nearly a decade of experience and practice. Right. And um, started off like I said, on Joe. Right, right. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool kind of history of of I guess um, discovering Joe, right? And then even as you said, how even the compliments that you got kind of impacted you to kind of like move forward with it. Not in, of course in a um, you know prideful manner, more of just making you think, right? And I think that's something that like influence has a lot on like whether it's joe or people around you like um everyone's an influencer right unpopular opinion but <laughs> everyone has an influence on each other right and you don't have to have like you know fifty thousand followers or whatever um to be able to kind of move someone and, and impact someone um and uh yeah so that, that that's great to hear um are you still styling your hair I guess I, you probably learned a lot of techniques and, and stuff over the time period. And I guess when it comes to like hair or appearance, especially like with, you know, physique or even clothes and stuff like that, where does hair rank in that? And you can be honest, <laughs> like, especially uh, your routine, like how does that routine set? Well, <clears throat> Um, one of my previous job roles was working in retail and working in high-end fashion. Yeah. So uh, I'm obviously big on sportswear anywhere um, from this job. I worked in a sports shop. Um, I got a big fashion for like footwear. I just I love my trainers. I love my shoes. Um, but also working in high-end fashion, it was also gave me that insight to understanding about styling and mm -hmm. clothing. Um, and obviously about the clothing that I fit the body well and known how to show physique. So I've never been the Sometimes I, I, I definitely avoid it as much as I can. I'm much more towards the the trend of the oversized sort of fit. But mm -hmm. um, not too long ago, I would wear things that would be a little bit, should, 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 yeah, should I say, like skin tight to try and show off your physique and such. In terms of, but that's like changed now. Now, with my background and my knowledge, I'm like, it's more about having clothing that fits uh, the person well, hangs off the body well, but isn't like, it's not like it's trying to, show that oh my god this guy is humongous he's wearing a skin tight top or like he's trying to conceal something it just what fits the person well in terms of the, their clothing and how it hangs off the body and i think appearance in terms of hairstyle is equally important so like you can wear a fantastic suit but not look after your skincare your or mm -hmm. your sport or um your grooming of like your beard or your hairstyle and such and it just doesn't come together. It's about complementary, like what complements the other thing. Um, so I couldn't put, in terms of a tier list, genuinely for me, well, if for me, like literally, whenever I leave the house in my job, I'm like hair, hair first, I call it a bird's nest. Honestly, if I don't, if I don't go out of the house wherever my hair isn't sorted, I'm either wearing a cap yeah. or I ain't going out. It's as simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, hair is just it's just it's it's ingrained in me that i've got to like i've got to uh, make sure that my appearance and my and my hair is number one it's always important to me um and even when i've tried to care less even when i've tried to be less fussed on it and my girlfriend even says sometimes i'm quite it's almost like i seek validation and it's not that i am but it's just it's just a self-conscious thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, i like to appear um in good presence i don't want to turn up scruffy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so for that like hair it's a non-negotiable almost yeah yeah i totally know what you mean like i think there's certain things that you kind of pay more attention to especially when you're about to go out whether it's you know a daily thing or even like a special thing and it's something that's ingrained in you now right so it's like 
you can't step out of the house without you know doing that and i think it's totally uh understandable to feel that way too right and like even though your girlfriend might say otherwise like i think it's something that you're just passionate about right it's who you are as you said before and i think that's something amazing so yeah yeah exactly um it, it, it like yeah it is just something which is just part of me like i'm in some ways like there's some of my previous jobs and stuff like i've been known for my hair i genuinely have been known for like my appearance people have said like like i said the way that he dresses and the way that he presents himself like you can clearly see this is a person who looks after himself and i and i'm i've got a lot of pride in that i mm-hmm. think that like you know this is something i do want to i do want to improve and get better at and continuously looking after my skin mm-hmm. um and I, yeah, I, I, I rank it highly. I think it's really important for the self-care. Um, one of the things I, I talk a lot about with clients and um, a lot in my role in particular is, it's a phrase which I use regularly and I think a lot of people at first get misconstrued with it, but I tell people to be selfish. Mm. And normally a lot of people tend to think, you know, that's not a good thing. But what I mean by it is that I want people to be selfish, to be selfless. Oh, that's powerful. <laughs> I have to think about that for a second. <laughs> Can you elaborate so, a bit on that? <laughs> so going into the, uh, deeper into it, um, the reason I'm, I talk openly about it, so I've been through phases of depression. Um, I know what that sort of feels like. And the best analogy that I can sort of experience it for myself is I class it as like you've got your own internal tank and your own internal body, which is like, like a battery you're at 100 percent when you are full you know you're good you're good to do when i was in a bad state in a bad way i would class myself basically like you know one percent ten percent really low bottom of the tank on the drains literally on the blinker and the way i, I felt i thought is like if i'm if i'm at ten percent right now the only the energy that i present out to the people my loved ones my family the most important people around me i can only give them ten percent of myself mm-hmm. because that's all i'm capable of giving at this moment in time so they're suffering because obviously they're not getting the best version of me. And equally, I'm beating myself up internally saying, I know I'm capable of more. I know that I've got more to give. I know that I'm there's more in me. But right now, I've got nothing more. This is me. This is just what I'm at. And there's a sense of like, if I give too much or if I give out too much to too many people in, in return, I leave nothing for myself. And I have a lot of um, clients that um, go through these experiences now, and a good example, I think, is uh, parenting. People who have children, mm-hmm. they definitely give out to their children. They make their children number one, which I completely understand and I appreciate. But I say the problem is don't get yourself lost. Don't, get, don't lose yourself in your child, because then if you leave nothing for yourself, you're only draining your internal battery. There needs to be time to be selfish. There needs to be time for the self mm-hmm. in order to recharge your battery. And that's what I have to do, going from 1%. And working on weaning my way back up, and that's where fitness actually truly came in. That was when I left my previous role and took the plunge to go into fitness, and that was when it was like, you know what, I need to, I need to make this change, and it's for me for the right choices because I need to fix my, fix myself, or almost like, get myself out of the, um, the place that I was in, and um, recharge my own battery so that then I could recharge myself up to a hundred percent so that I can give one hundred percent to the people around me. That deserve that from me because they know that I'm capable of it and I can give that. Anyone that's watching? That's wise words. Yeah, that's wise words of wisdom right there. Yeah, it, <laughs> you gotta write that down. Whoever's watching, I'm even gonna like take that mm-hmm. mental note too. That that was that was a great kind of like explanation of I guess um, like I guess defining who you are in a way and also giving yourself like a lot of self-respect too you know what I mean because I think as you said people even parents like I think that's a great example right it's like they give all to their 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 kin right their children and I think that's a very wonderful thing but also as you said you they start to lose themselves if, if they're not like like they're not I guess aware of that and what can happen is that they may not understand the, the, the children as they're growing up because, you know, they always think, okay, I'm just going to shower them, I'm just going to nurture them, you know, uh, but I'm not, like, growing with them, right? I think that's a um, a really good thing to think about. Sorry, Nana, oh, I right. interrupted you. 
Did you want to say anything, Nana? Sorry. <laughs> no, no uh, you said what I was thinking. Yeah, it was just, uh, <laughs> I just wanted very to. Very well said. It yeah. makes all the sense. Yeah, the yeah. totally, totally. Um, uh, the parenting example was, was perfect. I, I think I refer to as well the fact, like, even with partners, people. I think humans in general, we're very given as humans in general. We want to give out to the people around us. We want to be providers in some sense or some form of support and like protection. Um, and again, using that exact same example, we end up, if you put yourself in a tier list in your, in your own imagination, you tend to put yourself second. You always get, always put the person you love, your partner, the person that's most important to you, all your children, they always come first. And in some ways, we understand that with parents or with partners. Like, no, I put you first before me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then lose out. And I think, I think COVID was a really, really helped highlight the importance of the self <clears throat> and the fact that, like, I say this in the sense of like, but or you should always be number one. Children, okay, you can take part. You can take part of, like the the top pedestal together, but people who tend to put their partner necessarily on top of themselves it shouldn't really be that way you need to focus on yourself and they need to focus on themselves so that you both are each other's second but mm. you come together mm -hmm. so that you are both so you are both in the right place because otherwise if you put them then you're at 50 percent. as i said you're not giving yourself the best and they could they could potentially um, it goes it down to deep sort of spirals as such but it can go to places where like people just take some people get, uh, we're all givers, but to a certain people, we're also very good at taking and mm -hmm. receiving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's about like, you no, know, there needs to be a level like that. As you said, self-respect or proud of the self. And I'm, I'm a huge believer in it. I think that it's really, really important that you need to, I struggle with it even to this day. You know, there's times I'm very much a giver in the sense of like who I am as a person. I will always do my best to try and help out as well as I can or have good intentions. Um, but it is like, sometimes I have to be aware of what I'm consciously doing. So it's always a learning curve, but I think, I just think it's a really important thing to be aware of. And like I said, be selfish to be selfless. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to take care of yourself to be, to have something to give. Yeah. Exactly. No. Yeah. Wow, what a discussion, guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of circling back a bit um, to kind of like personal training, uh, Scott, yeah. and you yourself kind of starting your own company in a sense, like your own brand, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give people out there looking to start, you know, either their own brand, their own business? Like, how was that? start for you and you know um what have you learned from that for me so the, the unique thing about me is in terms of my actual role it's kind of a self-employed role but it's also kind of a bit of an employed i'm kind of in between the middle mm, okay uh this year i am actually looking to branch out even further and go 100 percent fully on my own that is my long-term goal at the moment but i take nothing away from it like my role is completely based on the fact that like, as a personal trainer, I am employed to personal train. And when I give my time and I give my, give my hours out to my uh, availability, should I say, if I don't receive any clients during that time, I don't get paid. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not having a busy day or if I'm not um, working, like getting many clients in, I'm not getting paid. So obviously for me, in terms of building up the client and the best advice I can give is Looking back to myself is like, in some ways, just chase what you enjoy. Look, love what you enjoy. Because for me, my job, there's definitely burnout experiences in my role. Um, I think it's, I think it's actually, I use it as, as an example again, saying about like barbers, like as an office role, I've, I said, I've done it. There's times when you can have a very busy day. You can be really, really off your feet. But there's definitely moments when you could say, you know what, I'm going to have 10 minutes. I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm not going to respond to my emails. You're just going to have a bit of a, Oof, no one. Personal training, like I said, is very similar to barbers in that you can't have that moment. When you, you're obviously with a client or something, they can't, you can't just say, do you know what, I'm a bit tired right now. Do you mind, just give me five minutes. <laughs> they say to the, the barber can't just go, yeah. do you know what, I can't be asked to cut your hair right now. I'm just going to just, just give me a moment, okay? Just right, right. Kind of get that. So it's, it's quite intense. But 
what is the best thing about it and the reason why I say that is like I I chased a goal which I wanted and something which I have a passion for and I love and I enjoy um, and even when it is busy and mental and I do get those phases and I do get those senses of burnout I still can come home and think you know what I don't feel like I'm working genuinely I, I'm for me it's like I'm doing something which I'm, I love and I'm interacting with people that love it too or want to see development and change in their life so I'm surrounding myself with positivity and good energy yes I get my moments like I said just then I do have clients who do struggle as well and they ultimately use me as a bit of a therapy session too but equally as well I'm helping transform their lives you mm -hmm. know to make them better like the motto I use is like fitter happier healthier stronger that if you stick with what I say listen to the things we do have a slow and steady gradual sustainable approach this then I'll, I'll change your life I got and I, I say that with 100% confidence um, and I say that because I've done it and I do it on a daily basis so um, for me it's the transition from going from my previous roles into the self-employed and such and doing this whole adventure myself Yes, there is an element of obviously risk involved, but chase it is a case of chasing your dreams because if you don't, it is like, yeah, again, COVID was a perfect example of it. Otherwise, you just end up, you're, you're, you're ultimately sacrificing yourself. You know, there's so many quotes and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm 30 years old now, and some people say, but when you're 30, you should have yourself figured out. And I'm not saying that I do. I've just, I feel like I now, I now know the path that I'm on. Mm. I know the direction I want to go. Um, and I see so many quotes that say, like, you know, we spend so many time, so many hours at work and do it over time or do this or that for someone else's employee or whatever to sacrifice time with our family and our loved ones. And, um, you know, worst case scenario, we never wanted to ever happen, but say if someone was to pass away, you're just a number to an employee potentially who can replace you. They'll they'll mourn, they'll have their moment, but you'll be replaced within a month or so. You know, like they'll say, yeah, we're sorry, Salou, whatever. But the family, the time you didn't spend with your family is what you miss out on. Mm -hmm. And having the self-employment of the control of like I can control my diary, I can control my life, I'm in control of what's going on. It's very empowering, and personal training is a wonderful field it's a hard field it's by no means is it um simple but people say personal trainers die and it's not personal training will never die people always need trainers yes you can get an online coach but it doesn't have literally what it says in the name personal and that actual that interaction that connection and that relationship that you build up obviously we yeah it's 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 a unique thing and it's brilliant in itself Wow, Scott Lawrence, everyone. <laughs> Definitely, if you need personal training, don't hesitate to contact uh, Scott, and we'll we'll definitely uh, um, put all your links and all that stuff uh, for everyone to see for sure. Um, Thank you. I kind of wanted to kind of wrap up a bit here because uh, time is running out a little bit. But um, speaking in line with the fitness industry, uh, and you kind of talked about this too uh when you were talking about you know when we talked about appearance when we talked about hair and this is kind of like a kind of wrap-up question in a sense uh talking about you know hygiene grooming and, and and hair and everything but do you think especially in the fitness industry people do they genuinely care about you know how they look like your your colleagues or you know um like i guess when people are coming to you they're looking to, you know, better themselves in a general sense, right? They're looking to, you know, and how much of that, I guess, comes into like, okay, you know, uh, are people coming to you more for physique? Or are they just coming to lose a bit of weight, you know, muscle, you know, all that stuff. And then as a follow-up question to that is like, do you think in general men are, are kind of like, like especially in this this time and and, and, and I guess yeah this period of of um of when we, of where we're living is like do they, are they caring more nowadays um okay so in regards to the second question the i think the answer really there is like it truly depends mm. it depends on the individual and depends on where they are in their life 
um, in terms of um, it all coming together and just generally, I think, I think, again, uh, I guess, I guess it's a very similar answer. It depends on where the person is in their life. If they're at a point where you know where they want to make a change, mm-hmm. so something else I talk about and like um, understand with people is saying like, look, if you're coming obviously for a physique change or something, ultimately changing your appearance, your appearance to um, to like improve your physique and improve your mental state and feel stronger in who you are and feel more empowered as a person that will have positive impact in every sense in your life like i get people that you know when they when they're in the fitness i've got some people who do genuinely they do it for the fitness reasons and the aspects of their health because ultimately it is for their health but it's also for the length their longevity in their life mm. you know the amount of studies and stuff that has shown that obviously improve your physique and your body simply by doing resistance training is the number one thing to be done and i'm a huge believer in that um and i just i help people to um come to terms and realize obviously that it is hard work in all in all honesty you've got to earn you will people spend so much time in their life with, again coming back to the financial sector of their of earning of to work where they are in their position in terms of their career they'll spend blood sweat and tears to try and get that but yet with their body people tend to have want a quick fix or mm-hmm. want to try and do it in six weeks or just get it done. It's like, it don't work that way. Like, if I was a genie and I could say to someone, I'll click my fingers and I'll give you the, the body of your phys- of your dreams, what you everything you've ever wanted, I'll give it you now. And they go, oh, great. As soon as I do that, they'd have absolutely no idea how to maintain that physique and within a couple of weeks, they'd lose it because they haven't earned it. Mm-hmm. And it's, when you have a person that comes and says, look, I'm ready or I'm in a state where I'm... I want to make the change in my appearance so that I can fit into my clothes better, so I can change who I am and feel more empowered as a person, male or female, I think. Um, and grooming as well, like obviously, it plays a part in that, um, I don't think of the word, but like that self esteem al- almost mm-hmm. of just making themselves feel more worthy, you know. And it's not that you necessarily don't have any, any self worth in the first place, but boosting that isn't a bad thing in my eyes you know you want to improve it and physical training and resistance training is one of the best ways to really like see what the body is truly capable of and what what you can do with your body is it's phenomenal and the way that you can change someone's mindset like i said i've changed some clients who've lost a stupid amount of weight and are stronger than they've ever been their entire life i've got some people who've been training i had a guy literally i'm talking about three weeks ago um, has been training for over 20 years and had a goal um, with regards to bench pressing and he could just never reach it on his own and yeah I said to him like, well look uh, we'll do it this way listen to me do what we say and I'll get you there and I got him there within a couple of weeks because he already had it in him just about uh, teaching his mindset and giving him the time to practice and giving him the support that he needed and he was genuinely like I've never done that in my life That that's that's a goal I've wanted to do my entire life and you just may help me do it. I was like, yeah, you know, it's like changing that that mental side and like that shift and that watching someone feel like just watch their life glow, their eyes glow is yeah, it's wonderful. That's amazing. That's a really good kind of wrap up there. <laughs> Thank you, Scott, for telling us about you know your life, what you do um and inspiring people i think there's a lot of words of wisdom uh in what what you described and 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 people can really i think be moved by by what you say so no, thank you like i said i appreciate folks you could get the invite and come on board and i'll see yeah my hats off i've always got time for the blue mind community <laughs> um um i will be honest here yeah, now i am less active than I was before because I have just focused on my, my current goals but I will always give time to the community because it was always a great place for me and I had a lot of respect for yourself, Nana, Joe, everyone that was involved, all the all the OGs we, like we mentioned before, prior to the call, you know, the um, I've already forgotten his name with the Cavalier sort of. Oh yeah, Cameron, Cameron. Cameron. <laughs> Cameron obviously where he's gone and stuff and like you know and Mike mm-hmm. and everyone and, yeah, just talking back to the OG guys, you know, we, we started like a long time ago. I just came along as a, lo- a local boy fanboy, really. And yeah, here I've we got, are. I've got, a lot of, 
yeah. appreciation. Here we are. Yeah, it's crazy to see how far we've uh, we've come. Um, just a heads up, I, I know we've got like a, a minute or two, probably less than a minute left. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you again, Scott, and appreciate the time you took. Um, appreciate the stories again. Um, and yeah, like you mentioned Cameron, he might even be on here. We're no, who knows, right? I think we'll, you know, we're doing this every month to try and kind of just, yeah, give people their flowers in a way, you know, and, um, and also just show how special the community is. So yeah. great. Yeah. All right. So I think that wraps it up here. We might get cut off in two seconds, actually.